The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. We're taking three days, three short lessons. We're going through discipline, pruning, and accusations. If you've uh, heard that phrase before, it's because we've done uh, we've done teaching on this before. You can go and find it on our website. I don't remember if it's a daily teaching or it's a Sunday service. Either one, uh, we've, been, we've already taught through this subject before. But as the Lord does things in my own life and does things in our church and as we go through different seasons, and especially in the generation in which the Lord returns, having spiritual discernment to what is happening in your life is vital if you are going to remain faithful to the Lord. So this, this lesson is not a secondary lesson. It's primary importance in understanding God's heart and if it is God moving in your life and why. And so let's talk about today, the pruning of God. Yesterday, we talked about discipline. And just as a two-second summary, discipline is God's chastening. Chastening in the King James Bible is the same word for discipline. So discipline or chastening is God doing things in your life to remove sin, hindrances, and ungodliness. God's removing compromise out of your life. He's removing sin. And the reason God is removing sin is that you may inherit the blessing. God's heart is that you enter into the fullness of his promise, but there's things in your life that have to be removed if you're going to enter into God's promises. And that is when we see the discipline of God in our life. Today, we're going to look at John chapter 15, and we're going to look at God's pruning and why pruning is very different then divine discipline and we're going to look at the difference in the two today to really understand when god is moving in our life and the reasons why god does these things they are very similar in the in the practical application they may look almost the same in your life when they happen but they are for two very different reasons and understanding those two different reasons will help you to understand what God is doing and why. It's very important. Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, go with me to John chapter 15. Let's just go ahead and read through these verses. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now this is powerful. And the things I want to talk about is the father is the husbandman. Or different translations, he's the vine dresser. He's the vineyard keeper. He is the one who prunes. And the father is a gardener all the way back to the Garden of Eden. He planted the garden. You know, this is not just a new characteristic of the father that Jesus expounds on in the Gospels. It's who he's always been. But there's something special about a gardener. And what he does is he prunes. Now, it's very important to understand what branches he prunes. It's those branches that beareth fruit. So if you are bearing fruit, 
you will be pruned. Now, in the Western world, especially in America, I come from America, I am an American. We don't like things that are producing being pruned. Now, if you look at a gardener, one of the, this is how most, I would say almost exclusively all gardening works. When something is growing and producing, what they will do is they will cut it back. They won't take it all away, but they will cut it back in a season after growth so that it may in the next season grow even farther than it did the first time the branch has to be pulled back that way the next time it grows it grows past where it was at before so if you grew to a level of five you may be pruned back to two but that's so in the next season you can go to eight the pruning of god is not to is not to bring you down. The pruning of God is to bring you back that way you may go even farther forward. If you remember the little cars in uh, when we were kids that you'd pull the car back a little bit, it'd wind up the wheels and then you let go and boom, the car shoots forward. That is how pruning works in our life. God brings back that you may go forward more. And the reason for the pruning is very different than the reason for the chastening or the discipline. Now, yesterday we talked about discipline and chasing as relationship to sin. God is removing sin and hindrances in our lives. That way we may inherit the blessing. That we may move step into the promise. There's things in our life that can't be there. Hate, malice, unforgiveness. Uh, addictions like alcohol or pornography or, or drugs or illicit sex. There's, there's things in our life that can't be there. If you're going to inherit the promise, especially when you're young, you know, I, I grew up obviously in the American church and I, I say grow up when I was 18 forward, but sexual immorality or just having sex outside of marriage when you're, you know, in your twenties, was very prevalent because I, I I grew up in a secular college. You know, I went to a secular college. People just having sex was common. But for you to inherit God's promises, sex outside of marriage is not okay. So if that's something you're doing, God's going to remove that. He's going to discipline you because you can't be in leadership and do that at the same time. So there's a discipline that takes place, but it's for you to inherit the promise. So there's a sin in your life that cannot be there if you're going to inherit this blessing. That's when discipline takes place. But pruning or, or the pruning of God is very different. God's not pruning sin. God's pruning people that are producing fruit. These are people that are in the blessing, in the promise. They are producing for God and God prunes them. Another, the word it also says right here in the King James is he purgeth it. Now the word purge or pruning, the word purge in the King James is as you purge a valve. So if I, I was an engineer before I got into the ministry and if you have a valve, and it builds with pressure. It's just a lot. Like if you take a, a valve of water and, a, and the water starts to build up and it's at a valve and to build, 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 build. Well, the more you get, the more you get, the more you get, the more pressure, more pressure, more pressure so that the pipe will not explode or the pipe will not break. You grab the lever and you purge the valve. You open the valve and you let the water out. Now, this is very important in our lives. The more we have going on, the more we do, the more we do, the more we do, the more pressure we have, the more pressure we have, the more pressure we have, it builds, it builds, it builds so that we may not break or crack. That way we may actually be able to contain what's happening. God purges. He releases the vow. And he lets things go. He cuts, he prunes, he purges things out of our life so that in the next season, 
We can do more. See, when you're walking with the Lord and you're producing fruit, even verse 3, you are clean. God's not pruning people with sin. That the, the point of the pruning is not the sin. And this is the very this is the very big difference between the two. Discipline takes place in our life because of sin that needs to be removed. Pruning takes place in the life of a believer that's walking holy. But God still does something in both of their lives. So let's just go and make the big difference. Uh, discipline, chastening, is because of sin. Things that need to be removed out of your life. And then the other one, which is God's pruning, God purging, is that way you may do more. God's removing distractions. Not just distractions, but God is removing good things out of your life. You ready? So that you may cultivate intimacy with him. We've talked many times about this chapter, and I don't have a ton of time today to go into this in great detail. But if you, let's say you start a ministry, and then it builds, it builds, it builds. Now you're preaching six days a week. You got 100 people messaging you a day. You got 50 employees, and you never have time to study your Bible. You never have time to talk to the Lord. And you're building, building, building with all the pressure and all the people's expectations of you. And you're looking at God saying, I want to do more for you. I want to do these things. But the pressure is building. And God says, I don't want you to break. And I purge the vow. And the next thing you know, those good things are leaving. And you're, and you're looking at God saying, I thought they were good. They are good. But there are seasons in your life where you need some good things to leave. And man, in and of themselves, do not have the wisdom. They don't have the resolve to prune back things that are good. And I, I, I say this personally. I would not remove things in my life if they were good and they were producing. I would not do that. But it needs to be done so that we may do more the next season. Because there's something greater that God wants you to do. You're bearing fruit. You're bearing level five fruit, but God wants you to bear level nine fruit. But the only way you're going to go from five to nine is not going from five to nine. You're going to go from five to three, then back to nine. God has to bring things back. He has to prune. He has to remove certain things. So that way you may grow. And as you grow, then you will go farther than you went before. See, discipline is about sin. Pruning of God is removing good things to give space to God so you can grow, release the pressure. That way, in the next season, you may do more than you ever did before. These differences are very important. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about accusation. And then we're going to have one more day and we're going to put it all together and understanding the difference in the three. Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me.